Yeah, yeah, what's right, good, what's good? Go man here live, what's up? Welcome to 97.9 The Box virtually because we can't really have no guests up here yet. So we're going to do, this is, our, this is our first virtual meeting, but it was bad. I appreciate it, I appreciate it. How you doing? I'm doing good right today, what you do? You good, good, shit, chilling. I'm about, to, uh, I'm about to go pop out to my boy GT Garza's event and then... uh. Oh. Studio for sure. None, none, you know what I mean? Same old shit. Just moving around. Just got back to Houston, so trying to enjoy it, though. Ooh. Yes. Okay, this is random. Before we start, I have a question to ask you. Have you ever been skinny dipping? Have ever what? Have you ever been skinny dipping? Nah, I ain't never been. <laughs> what? <laughs> never, ever, ever? Nah. uh Have you wanted to do it? I, don't, I never had the urge to go skinny dipping. <laughs> okay, look, we're going to get right into it then. Here we go, y'all. I'm getting serious to business. We got Dope Man here live. So first of all, before we start talking about your music and everything, because I know you have a lot of big things coming up, What? how did you get your name, Dope Man? Uh, the name, man, that's like actually a family name. You know what I mean? So, like, my dad called me, like, Dope growing up. Like, as a baby, he called me, like, Dodo. And then uh, when I turned about, like, five, they started calling me Dope Man, like my godmother. my So... I really didn't fuck with it, you know what I mean? And then, uh, like, growing up, I wasn't was trying to name myself, so I just, like, ran with it type shit, you know? And what about Dinah? Dinah was actually, uh, Dinah was actually, like, just like a, the, me and a homie from back in the gap that I first rapped with, he's from South Park, uh, his name was Tone. We started it, me and my boy Mike C, we started it back in, like, I don't even know when, like, high school, you know what I mean? And then, mm -hmm. uh, it just came about, you know what I mean? Like, it, it really derived off, like, Dynasty and, you know, like, power and shit like that. So, um, really, we just ran with it, you know what I mean? Like, we didn't really want to make up no names. We wanted to keep everything as original as possible, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. So, when did you first start, like, making music? Man, I started making music, like, probably, like, ninth grade type shit, you know? But I boxed for a long time. So, boxing was more of, like, what I did before, like, uh, mm -hmm. I really music serious i was in a real bad accident in like 2013 and um after that I, I just that's when i really dove into it so i'll say seriously like to like 2014 i was like that's when i was like <laughs> so when you got into the you weren't able to box anymore i mean not after like i was out of commission for like six months so i was, it was i got hit by a truck going like like almost like 45 miles an hour yeah were you okay uh, though yeah, I mean, I had like yeah like thank god but you know I was, my body was messed up you know my body was real messed up so uh, it wasn't the same. Like, it really wasn't the same, you know? I feel you. Did you ever think about going back to boxing? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, yeah, I tried it and it just didn't work. Right, right, right. Yeah, nah, it just didn't work. I mean, not that, like, I, I like I didn't even compete. Like, I remember I had gotten into, like, a street fight and I had broke my hand. I had broke my hand, like, and I was, like, just kind of, like, God just giving me a sign, you know? So, like, that's when I started running with, um, when I started running with, like, the music, for sure. There we go. Okay, so what was the first, like, song that you made or, like, video you posted or something that kind of, like, started going crazy and you were like, okay, people are fucking with it? Um, I think when me and the homie Propane dropped this record called J Jodeci, mm -hmm. uh, I was, like, off my first, like, one of my first projects. Mm -hmm. And then, like, after that, you know, it just it started booming. People started fucking with it. And um, everybody, you know, I was like, okay, this really can go somewhere. You know, we can really do something. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. So I think like Jodeci was like the first one on Andale. And then I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I like potential. It's, it's real. Like, it's not just like a dream in the sense of like, you know, because it, cause it really felt like that. You said what? Because it, it was happening then. You could see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like, um, yeah, it started becoming to fruition and really like started seeing like the beauty of it. And like, okay, it's, it's possible. Because, you know, like, when you're a kid and you just dream it, you don't really think that anything's like that possible. You know what I mean? Yeah. What is your yeah. family think about it too? Are they all like, they be like, we knew you, we always knew you could do it. Or they're like, wow, we didn't know. This is a surprise. Uh, nah, they, I mean, they knew, they always like, my, I think my mom's always really was the one who was like, you know, believed in everything. Like since I was a kid, no matter what I would do, whether it be like sports or anything I put my mind to, I was going to do it. So I feel like, you know, uh, 
they knew it. I feel like my moms knew it for sure. My dad really, when I stepped away from boxing, it was kind of like, you know what I mean, to be a rapper? Like, I always did it, but it wasn't like, it wasn't to the forefront. Like, me and Mike C, we've been doing this since we was kids, you know? Like, we got big at eight years old, like, rapping, and my boy Mike C talking about he's going to be my manager. I'm like, yeah. So it was always been in us. You know, this is who we are. Like, it's not an act or like a facade, for sure. And you're going to be, this is crazy, you're going to be at Rolling Loud in New York, right? You're performing? Yeah, yeah. New York, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying not to cuss, yeah. Oh, you can curse. It's okay. We, we, on, we, on, we on social media. You good. I'm lit for you. This is so <laughs> exciting. What, like, okay, so how do you prepare for like a big festival show or something like that? Because this is all everybody's been talking about this whole damn weekend. Rolling Loud, Rolling Loud, Rolling yeah. Loud. Nah, we did LA before. Um... Uh, we did LA and that was crazy. Like it was just a big step up for us. But as far as preparation goes, I feel like we're prepared because we've been doing shows for so long. Like this wasn't like nothing new or like we didn't just start. And we put a lot of effort into our live shows. And like, I remember Big Chris said it like, you know, everybody want to be a rapper, but everybody out can't do a show, you know? And it's true, like you go to some shows, it's just not it. But the internet cloud is crazy. I feel like we're the opposite. Like we definitely got internet presence, but our live shows are definitely like the, the ticket sellers, you know? Yeah. Yes. A big difference between yeah. the people and then the fans in person. But sometimes it be the crowds. Like, I don't know. I feel like all these, these last weekend, I was like, the crowds were just like, mm, I don't know. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, though. Like, I love Houston to death. That's where, like, I got my like, my biggest fan base. But Houston crowds are, like, they be turned down. Blast them. Blast them. Let them know, though, man, because I hate I be going somewhere and the crowd is not the artist or whoever i'm like y'all need to wake up they just be on the hookah sitting at the table mm -mm. yeah not nah, not nah, like yeah it'd be not nah, be too cool like in houston it'd be like nobody trying to have fun everybody's trying to be like you know awesome like like but um but now nah, if you I like my, like you come to my shows like they be going crazy like you got to come to my headliner we're doing it probably like at the november probably in houston yes absolutely and where, where okay so where would you say is the best crowd that you had so far anywhere <laughs> The best crowd? South by. That's hard. I mean, um, I like the L.A. crowd. L.A. be going up. L.A. goes crazy. Uh, shout out my boy Cypress in L.A. He's really going to put me, like, on a lot of plays out there. But, I mean, Austin. I like Austin. I performed at Stubbs one time and for the festival. Austin's pretty tight, you know? Yes. It's fans, I guess, on the cities. And it really be them, like, them, them show, them, uh, the smaller cities be turned, you know, because I feel like they 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 uh appreciate it versus like bigger cities that kind of you can go see a show anywhere type shit, you know. And you said you said your head your headlining show you're gonna headline a show in November here. Yeah, we're gonna do the tour. We're setting up the Brown Soul tour. That's gonna be my next project, and uh, the tour gonna go crazy. Yeah, so Houston's gonna be up for sure. Okay, I'm definitely gonna be there. And we gotta talk about you talking about your next project. We gotta talk about no hesitation. Hold up, no hesitation. <laughs> Golden, Golden is probably one of my favorite songs on there. Word. Um, yes, Mark Marcus Clay, yeah, he's super, super dope. How did y'all link up, by the way? Y'all been, y'all been cool. Man, nah, honestly, like, uh, we met, we came across in a few times, and, uh, but you know, bro, he been around for a minute, like, as far as an artist, like, he started it real young, so, mm -hmm. uh. I think, like, we just, like, respected each other's artistry. Like, he's one of the spitters out the city that I really be, like, yeah, like, this fool can rap, you know, like, and it's not a lot, not a lot, not necessarily in the city, just a lot of people in this new generation of artists that are, like, lyrical, lyrically inclined, and he definitely is, and then I had that record, so I really didn't even want to get, I didn't want to get, like, the typical, like, just rippity rap record, I wanted, uh, I really wanted, uh, like, something groovy, I mean, something cool, and when I wonder, he definitely did, he, he took the level to another record, I appreciate him for that, too, it was dope, I appreciate it, though. No hesitation. All them songs are like two years old, though. Like none of that is current at all. Yeah. What? What? So, so we, so we waiting on, we're waiting on the the new stuff to drop. Brown Soul, yeah. Brown, like no hesitation is dope, and I'm happy for what it did. Like at Low G, which is like he's in the Mexican culture of Houston and hip hop. Like he's definitely one of the top dudes. He wrote with SPM. Like he did a lot of dope things, and he has a lot of love for me. So I have him on the intro. But uh, nah, like yeah, Brown Soul's gonna be like you know. Yeah. yeah. And when is Soul gonna drop? When is what? Brown, oh, Brown Soul. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know. Like soon? Not not too. Not it's not. It's already finished and complete. We are just trying to uh, you know, put the videos together, put the marketing together, uh, strategize with my team just to give it like 
I don't want it to drop and then it'd be like, oh, that shit was tight. Now it's just next week. What's new? Like, I want it to be a complete movement and, you know, something crazy. What about No Hesitation is moving too? You got the Screwed Up remix song with yeah. Young Danger. And y'all oh, yeah. it's booty, right? You said yes. You said, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we sampled that. For sure. Track Sounds is the uh, producer. And that's the homie, long time homie. And shout out Daisy for jumping on it. We I never even met bro in person, but it was just uh through mutual connections that he ended up tapping in and he killed the, you know what I mean, he killed that shit. He did everything that he was supposed to. Nah, yeah, for sure. I, we just performed it at Trade Day and that shit went up, you know. But uh What's your nah. favorite song to perform of all your songs? My favorite song to perform? Mm hmm The um Probably No Limit 91. I got this record called No Limit 91. It goes crazy. Always at the shows. But um, I got this new one I just did called Goldies and Odies that's kind of growing on me, too. So I like mm -hmm. to uh, like new shit whenever I go do shows that, you know, just kind of like pop out shows. But um, No Limit 91, for sure. That's probably my favorite one because it's, it's fast. It's, you know, it, it's, it gets the crowd going. It's energetic. Yeah. It has a lot of attributes. Goldies and Odies is going to be on Brown Soul? Yeah. E yeah. Okay. Is Brown Soul gonna be like EP vibes or like full on album or full on nah, mixtape? Nah, that's album. an album for sure. Yeah, that's an album. Uh, we independently okay. dropped. Shout out Baron Studios. They they kind of they gave me a home to record and Ooh. we put it together, you know. So what percentage? This is my this is my last question. I have so many. Is what percentage um of the way is Brown Soul done? Like eighty? Oh, musically it's a hundred percent done, one hundred ten percent. But um, just on the other, we just got the covers back. Uh, what else we got? We got like. Um, just a little videos to tighten up on, you know, uh, features that mm -hmm. I need to tighten up on. And uh, that's pretty much it. We'll be ready. I think as far as the whole complete process, we're probably like 80% as far as the music, you know, aside from music. So it's going to be crazy. So when you drop your songs and your singles and stuff, though, you like to put the video, the visual with the, with the song at the same time? Yeah, like, I feel like it don't make no sense to just drop, you know, now you got people got to see it. People, you think about it, Instagram when they see you and they, they they believe it now or like not even just believe it but they can uh almost buy buy into it get invested into it yeah and uh, yeah like you know videos are it's important it's a video world now that's why we got Instagram TikTok 15 yep. second stories or whatever it is it's a very visual world where people have to buy into that you know are you on TikTok nah I need to get on it though nah <laughs> on TikTok you want, I know you be killing it on TikTok huh <laughs> Like 10 talks. I don't even know what you call them. Are they called talks? Ticks? I don't even know. Mm -mm. I'm late on the TikTok game. I'm a little bit older. I mean, like Instagram, my my store, I can do stories and all that, but I don't even like the reels or whatever. But I'll be trying. Yeah. Nah, I need to get on it. My manager be on my ass about it. Like, bro, let's get on TikTok. Let's get on TikTok. But I just never, uh, you know, shout out all the homies <laughs> tapping in too. Appreciate it. We see you. Once you get one person do a damn dance to your song or whatever, then it goes like viral. And then it's a new dope man challenge, whatever you want to call it. We got your brown soul challenge, whichever song it's going to be. But look, thank you so much for tapping in with me today virtually. Uh, our oh, yeah. Like, you know about the show in November so we can pull up and good luck at Rolling Loud and everything. I'm sure we'll be in touch too before then for sure. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Be easy. I appreciate it. All right. I'm going to tap yeah. in for sure. Have a good one. You too.